Good morning, everyone, and welcome back. We have a couple of things that we are going to do today. We're gonna to start working on the breakfast coffee nook area, and then we are going to get a couple of things ready for a booth reset. So we're gonna kind of work on two room makeovers. Um, first one being the kitchen, right here, step one. And step two is going to be the booth reset. I consider a booth a room, so a room renovation kind of thing because we are going to revive booth number two. So we have a couple of projects that we're going to be working on today. Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back. Today we have a couple of projects that we are going to be tackling. First off, we are going to start with our coffee, breakfast, wine bar, kind of nook area in the kitchen renovation. Project number two I haven't talked to you guys about. It is going to be a start of a booth makeover so to speak. Booth number two has an identity crisis and booth number two needs a little bit of sprucing up. So there's a couple of things that we're going to do for installation in that booth and we're going to work on those projects today as well. We have a door to kind of sand and paint, kind of an old door that I found on auction that's actually been sitting outside. So we're going to clean that up and just slap a coat of black paint on it to stress a little bit and we're going to install it into booth number two. <laughs> if you can tell, black is my favorite color. I love black and I love white and pink is my neutral. So those are usually my go-to colors. So those are all our projects that we are going to be working on today. And I think it's a lot to get done in one day. And it's kind of yucky outside. It is uh, strong winds. Strong winds to the point of where there might be a tornado warning or two. So if you guys don't know, I live in the Midwest, Missouri to be exact. And Sometimes we do have a tornado warning or two during the springtime, and today happens to be one of those uh, springtime tornado warning possibilities. <laughs> so, um, we'll just work with it. Why not? It'll be, it'll be fine. It'll be what it is. It'll be fine. Let's get started into our day. We have a lot get done. So in our previous vlog, Joe and I went to Home Depot and we bought our ready-made cabinets. We changed our design a little bit kind of midday to maximize our storage here in the kitchen, the Eden kitchen dining room area. We only have nine ca cabinets so far. Um, the original kitchen design is very lacking in storage. There is only four, five, six, seven, eight. I was wrong. There's only eight original cabinets into this kitchen. And so we need storage. Any kitchen needs storage. Um, and we are gonna maximize our storage here with this breakfast coffee nook. So we had to kind of morph our design a little bit in uh, the last vlog. We brought them all in and we kind of dry fit them in place. Today, we are going to rip up the carpet so we can have a nice straight, um, so we can have a nice level surface because we're, we are going to be changing the flooring in this place. Second of all, what we're going to be doing is leveling all of these base cabinets and we're going to be hanging the wall uh, unit as well. Everything is, today is going to be just hung so it can be leveled and secure to the wall. That's our first step. 
pull these cabinets out from the wall and take the baseboard off and then rip up the carpet that is around it and dispose of it and get all those nails and nail heads. And then when we put the cabinets back on, it will be on a nice flat surface and we can shimmy it up so it can be all nice and level. All right, before we start ripping up carpet and moving these cabinets that are dry fit, I'm first going to mark them out on the carpet using with, <laughs> I love tape, using this tape, uh, just painter's tape. We're not ready to do the floor quite yet. So I'm not going to rip up the whole carpet and then live with the subfloor for, you know, months until a flooring can arrive. We're gonna do these in baby steps. So right now I'm just going to mark off with this tape where the cabinets are right now. And so that tells me exactly where to cut the baseboard and then how much of the carpet to remove. Now that everything is moved out of place and we have marked where I need to cut the carpet, it's time to cut the carpet. And the easiest way I have found to do this is you just need a utility knife with a very sharp blade, watch for your fingers, and then a plier. So you're going to use the plier to help lift that carpet up off that tack board. First cut, then lift. Mm.
All right, guys, next up is pulling out the staples. So I'm going to get my uh, safety gear on and my tools. This is the best tool I have found to remove staples. You just grab it and rock it up. But if this doesn't work, I have regular old pliers. So between the two, that will work by pulling up all the staples. And then we got to pull up the tack board as well. So I have a little crowbar and a hammer, and we're going to get right into it. Okay, tip. Before you remove the baseboard, you're going to need to get your utility knife. You're going to have to cut around the top of the baseboard because people caulk the top of the baseboard just to kind of fill in all the imperfection and, and that's what you're supposed to do. So before you remove it, you need to run your utility knife around the top just to break that connection so you don't gouge your wall or take big chunks of paint out of your wall when you remove the baseboard. Next step is to remove this and to cut the baseboard right here. So we're gonna cut the baseboard right here and then cut this tack. And so I can pop that tack strip off and pop this baseboard off. So let's get our osculating tool. to Big Crow Daddy Bar. Baby. Big Daddy. I like 
Big Daddy. Well, there's a bigger one than that, but that one's better for what you're doing. I want to do that. I was trying to do it with that small one. Oh, yeah, that one's better. I found that out. When you're talking about Big Daddy, I was think I thought you had met the great big crowbar. That one's kind of the medium one. This is medium daddy? Mm -hmm. That's medium. You daddy. have bigger daddy than this? Well, technically I got the even big cojona daddy, but he's not very useful. You have extra, extra large daddy? Yeah. It's downstairs. It's the chin up bar. Well, that I is turned no, it into a chin up bar. That is That's no why thing. I said it, it, it's not useful the way it is. But. You can't install it. Ye of little faith. That's what you were talking about. You make a choice. He has little faith in me. I do not. I have lots of faith in you. Uh -uh. Oh, look at that! Look at what I found! Oh my word! Look what I found! Look what I found! It's like a little, a little dally on a stick! That wasn't a Gracie thing. Oh, isn't that cute? Look at her. This is what I found. I was hiding in your baseboards. Hmm. I was spying on you. I'm a sweet lady with the basket hiding in your baseboards. Hi, how are you? Okay guys, we are at a stopping point because we need to play with electricity. And show's gonna work on that. So this is where we are now. We're gonna put a pin in that and we're gonna work on the other projects. So backstory on this store. I got the store in auction about a year ago and it was a door that was left outside to weather and it wasn't in the greatest of shape then but when I brought it home my daughter <laughs> said it was a haunted door and it was giving off some weird vibes and so I did have it in the basement and well, I went to bed that night that I got it, and then I woke up in the middle of the night getting creepy vibes, and so I went outside. I put the door outside in the middle of the night, and I came back in to eliminate the house of the creepy vibes, the creepy haunted door vibes. <laughs> so it's been outside ever since. But I think all the creepy vibes have left it. I don't get that vibe anymore. I know, it's so weird, so random. But we are going to see what we can do to just kind of mm, make the door a little bit more presentable so we can put it in our booth installation piece. And I think it's going to turn out really good. So I've got some tools, got a scraper to scrape off all the loose wood veneer that um, has bubbled up and a carbine scraper and we are just gonna kind of clean it up a little bit so then we can slap a coat of black paint on it. Ugh. 
Oh, that's lovely. Mm. Yeah, that's lovely. All right, so I've done all my scraping and I chiseled off all the loose pieces of uh, board, all the least loose pieces of wood. Um, this isn't going to go in anybody's house, so I don't have to restore it. It's just going to go into my booth to make my booth pretty. So next thing I always do before I prep for paint is I clean it, it either with Dawn dish soap, Dixie Bell White Lightning, or Simple Green. Either one of those three, and I'm sure that there's many more out there, they're degreasers. Any degreaser will work because we want to degrease our object that we're going to paint um, before we put paint on because if there's any grease or grime on the thing that you're going to paint, the paint's not going to adhere. It doesn't have a good adherence to it. So simple green it is. Lemon scent, so it should smell lovely. And then one other thing I'm going to do before I put it in the booth, um, because it is a public area where there's a lot of antiques, I'm going to prep it for buggies. <laughs> I'm going to spray it down. So after I clean it with simple green, I'm also going to spray a bug spray on it, um, like a D spider, D ant, D, a D buggy, D bugger on it, and then I'll clean it again because I don't want to bring bugs into the place that uh, I sell things and I don't want to be responsible for bringing in any kind of critters that could harm an antique at the antique place. I'm not sure all antique booth owners think this way, but I certainly do. Um, so I'm going to clean it, debug it, clean it again, and then we'll prep it. And it should only take about mm, maybe 30 minutes or so. to paint. The sun dried it out nicely and now it's time to paint. It's actually turning out to be a really nice day um, where there was really high winds. It's now just like a gentle breeze. So that is very, very nice. <laughs> it's starting to turn into spring. That is wonderful. All right, what I'm going to use for that door is the, the Fusion Mineral Paint in Ash. This is the same color that we did the TV stand in. And it's almost like a, to me, it, it, it's interpreted as a flat, uh, a matte black. So it's a very soft black. It's really kind of, uh, I would say, a dark gray blue gray um but when it dries it it reads a, a very soft black so that's why i like this color in particular screenshot it if you want i do have coal black and that's a nice color too but um i thought well why not just use this up i have about oh that much in there so why not why not just move use it up. Oh. I'm going to kind of shake it up a little bit um, to get all of the goodies all mixed up. And, ooh, my brush. I'm not sure. I'm sure I've talked about these. These are my favorite brushes. This is the Klingon F50. This is the long handle. And I also have a short handle as well. I just, I... I don't know where it is. So we're going to go with the long handle version of it. It is very soft bristles. Um, and I love how these clean because you wash it like you would normally wash a brush and then you put it into water like this and it self cleans. How perfect is that? Um, so with the fusion, <laughs> I cannot talk with the fusion mineral paint in ash. 
our cling on brush f50 and a squirt bottle because this brush works best when it's wet we are going to slap a coat of paint on this door here i'll let you see it first isn't that beautiful? And guys, I don't want this perfect. This is not going to be a perfect application. It's gonna be that yucky uh, first coat and then we're gonna just kind of distress it with some sandpaper and just kind of make it look old. That's my favorite thing to do. This is just kind of a dis decor insulation piece. So I don't, I want the chippiness under, of the old paint underneath. I want the rough texture. I just want the rawness of it. It's an antique door. I'm going to embrace it. It's beautiful. There's a time and a place to camouflage flaws in old furniture, but today it's that's not the day. Okay, so we are banking on that ugly first coat, right? Um, and then we're gonna just distress it. It's gonna look great. But I will tell you, for Fusion Mineral Paint, it does lay down a great first coat. I'm gonna show you what it looks like right now, and then when the paint dries, we're gonna distress it. I'm only going to paint one side because the other side is gonna be up against the wall. So there's no need to paint that side, but I'll show you what I'm talking about. See what I mean about a great first coat coverage? And then now we are gonna just let it dry and then tomorrow we'll just do a quick de-stressing. Sanding here and there just to make it nice and distress. And then we will slap a top coat on and we will install it in our boot. So I have every intention to dewire some chandeliers that I got at the thrift store. I need to figure out how to do that. So I'm going to save that for the next vlog for you and I. This is it for today's video. I know we did not get to install the cabinets, but that's gonna be in the coming up vlog. You'll see us installing the cabinet. We've got to move the outlet up so we can plug the coffee maker in. There's no use for a coffee bar if you can't plug the coffee maker in. So Joe is working on that. He's right in there. Um, right now he is working on um, the plug situation and then once we get the plug situation up then we are going to install the cabinets we will plumb them and level them and shim them and get them all nice and leveled and installed in the next vlog <laughs> I hope you like this video the start of the kitchen renovation breakfast coffee nook and a couple little projects here and there for the booth uh, makeover Go ahead and do that thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't subscribed follow along i would love you along on this journey <laughs> i hope you guys have an amazing day and i will see you in the next vlog bye